Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Estonia once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from a recent trip over there. So we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years and I think it's fair to describe this brewery as potentially the best known Estonian craft brewery across the world. You can find their beers all over the place. I've seen them in Japan, Australia and you know various other places as well but they are very well known they do some really good stuff and they're definitely worth trying if you get the chance but yeah for this review then we are going to go to Tallinn the capital city in the northwest of the country and we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Poyala Prulikoda so this particular beer is the Pima U PX which translates into English as being Dark Night it comes in at 13.9% ABV, and they're describing this one as a Pedro Jimenez Sherry Barrel Aged Imperial Stout. So um, yeah, I think this one has the potential to be a very interesting review. Now, the first beer that these guys released was the O, but I was sure that was a Baltic Porter rather than an Imperial Stout, actually. I was sure that it was an Imperial Baltic Porter, or Baltic Imperial Porter, whatever you want to call it. So um, yeah, interesting that they described this one as an Imperial Stout. But regardless, I'm sure it'll be a really interesting one. Sherry Barrel Aging is quite interesting you get some really nice infused flavors out of that and you know i've had some very good imperial stouts from puyala in the past so high hopes for this one nice to feature these guys again on the channel of course and i hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this beer as well so um yeah i should also give a shout out and thank you to n parrell from puyala he was the one who gave me this beer. It somehow got pushed away to the back of the fridge and I forgot I had it. So uh, yeah, I found it and I thought, well, let's get this one reviewed and see what it's all about. But thank you to N for giving me this beer. He also gave me some of the other um, Poyala beers that you saw me review a little while back, actually. But definitely nice to feature these guys on the channel once again. Always doing interesting stuff. And if you want to see my Meet the Brewery segment that I did with N and uh, Chris Pilkington, then go and check that out. If you search uh, Poyala, in the uh, the channel you will find that so uh, yeah some interesting things and we got to hear the whole story of how Poyala started but um, yeah always interested to return to these guys I think we've got an interesting beer here and as I said earlier I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so let's get cracking then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Puyala Prulicoda before and we will no doubt return to these guys in the fairly near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Estonian beers that are reviewed for you that is being added to quite regularly because I still have quite a few of my Estonian beers left that I brought back with me and I'm sure we'll get over there for more at some stage soon but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Puyala Prulikoda then on to my brewery nose so Puyala as I've mentioned to you already are based in Tallinn the capital city in the northwest of Estonia and the company was founded by Peter Cake and Parle Green Nermits and they were joined a little bit later on by Tiet Pananen so the group went on a fact-finding trip to Brewdog in Scotland after the punk IPA reached Estonia and so many people in Estonia can cite the so many of the original craft brewers if you like in Estonia cite the punk IPA as being the beer that kind of highlighted for them what craft beer could be um, but it was there that two of the founders who were interning with Brewdog encountered Chris Pilkington who joined them as their head brewer and he's also now a partner in the company as well. Chris had actually graduated in marketing but he was an avid home brewer and he was producing some really interesting beers on the pilot kit and you know the guys just thought we have to get him on board and thankfully it went well for them. Um, but the company was officially founded in 2012 and then from 2013 they began to gypsy brew at a few other breweries around Tallinn. They opened their first brewery in May of 2014 in the Numa district in the south of the city and they had an initial capacity of about 12 hectolitres but this was scaled up considerably over the years. Their export started in 2015 and the brewery are now widely known throughout Europe and further afield. As I said earlier I've seen their beers in Australia and in Japan and things like this as well. I know that my Japanese beer dealer that I go to in Osaka he's always got lots of different um, 
He's always got lots of different Poyala things and a few Puasta as well, which is always interesting. Uh, but the original brewery had a tap room as well with 24 taps. But in 2018, they moved to a new brewery in the Noblesna shipyard in Northern Tallinn. And this uh, place has a new uh, brewery with a 50, 50 hectolitre Rolex brew kit, which is very impressive. Again, if you check out my Meet the Brewery segment, you can have a little look at that. But they've got an even bigger tap room there with an American barbecue restaurant. And apparently they're also considering founding a bakery at the moment because the chef who's involved in the American barbecue restaurant, his partner, she apparently is a very talented pastry chef. So they're looking at opening up a bakery to uh, kind of hone her skills a little bit. So um, yeah, quite impressive actually. Uh, the facility is crazy, you know, so I really recommend that you go and check it out if you get the chance. But yeah, as of April 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 95 different kinds of beer according to Untapped, and no doubt that will continue to rise over the next little while. There's always some interesting stuff coming out from Poyala. So um, yeah, we'll see what my next beer review from these guys is gonna be, but this is the last one that I actually have in the fridge for the moment. So I'll need to keep an eye out for what they're releasing through Sistembo Lagget, and no doubt I will go back over to Estonia at some point and I get a few more. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about these guys for the moment. As I said, if you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all those different beers that they've done. So yeah, let's crack on then and have a little look at this beer itself. So as you can see, the, the bottle took a little bit of a ding. It must have been when I was bringing it back from Estonia or something, but yeah, a little bit of a scratch on this one. But um, yeah, as you can see, Pima U, uh, Pedro Jimenez Sherry Barrel Aged Imperial Stout. You can see it's got the usual Puyala bottle cap on it. Sometimes you get a black one with white writing, of course. But yeah, 13.9% ABV this one. This is part of their cellar series. And I think it should be very, very interesting. And it says serve between 12 and 16 degrees. So I think, yeah, I think I've got it about 12 degrees just now. It feels as if it's roughly about 12 degrees or maybe just a little bit under. But um, yeah, certainly looking forward to it. Hopefully it's a good beer. And as I say, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. I don't know how easily available this beer still is actually. But yeah, let's crack it open and see how we go on. A 13.9% sherry barrel aged imperial stout. So let's go for it. So, oh, look at that. Look at that. Damn. <laughs> so, yeah, when it comes to Poyala, a lot of people would think about Imperial Stouts and things like this, because that I think that's the beers that they tend to focus on exporting. But they've got a whole host of other things as well. They've got some really nice IPAs. The first beer that I tried actually from Poyala was the Black Forest IPA, and that was beautiful. So when I first encountered this brewery, I always thought of Poyala as being the ones who put stuff in beers, you know, being an adjunct kind of forward brewery. But that's not how they turned out at all, actually. They do lots and lots of different things. They've got a very nice Pilsner, actually, which I hope I can review for you at some stage, the Pilky Pilsner. But um, yeah, I'll say that straight away, just even from being far away from the beer, the aroma that this one gives out, is something else. But yeah, you can see that when we poured this beer, it poured with about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say medium beige coloured head. That's just faded away to be a very, very thin foamy layer. There's just a few wee spatterings of, um, of foam sitting on the top of the thing there, but then you've got a nice foamy ring just around the edge of the glass. So yeah, it looks very, very nice. And as you can see in terms of colour, this one is pretty much black as night. Um, yeah, even when you shine, try and shine a bit of light through it, you only get the tiniest little hint of a kind of Coca-Cola colour edge around the surface. This beer is as dark as you're going to get, a dark ebony kind of colour, to be honest with you. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. You can see one or two little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it doesn't look as if it's the most active in the carbonation department. But that's never, that's not usually a bad thing. Not usually a bad thing, it just varies from beer to beer, of course. But in terms of an Imperial Stout, it certainly looks the part. Remember, when it comes to determining the colour of your beers, it depends on one, the type of malts that you use, and two, the, um, the, the length of your wort boil. A big Imperial Stout like this is probably going to have a wort boil of like four or five hours, something like that. And, uh, you know, the more that you boil the wort, the more the sugar's caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. Barrel ageing and adjuncts, of course, can play a role in determining the colour, but not so much in the case of Imperial Stouts. I also just remembered as well, I actually wrote down all the different malts that are in this one. 
from the untapped page because it's quite an impressive list. So this one has a ridiculous number. So this one has a uh, Pale, Munich, Special B, Crystal 300, Crystal 100, Crystal 200, Carafa Type 2 Special, Chocolate Malts and also some Chocolate Rye and Oats in the Malt Base. This thing has a ridiculous amount of stuff in it. But the hops in it are Magnum, and Northern Brewer and then of course it's um, aged on Pedro Jimenez barrels. I'm curious to see how the Northern Brewer turns out in this because that's a hop that's very popular for Doppelbox and things. It gives you some beautiful fruity characters. No doubt I've had it before in Imperial Stouts and just not realised but now that I know it's in this one I'm just curious to see how it turns out but yeah I forgot about that. That's your hop and um, malt list for, um, for this particular beer. But um, yeah, it certainly looks the part. Let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Nothing surprising about the appearance of this one when you think that, when you consider it as an Imperial Stout. So yeah. That smells very, very nice. Yeah, I really like this one. Not surprised though. I mean, I know this brewery fairly well haven't had a number of beers from them over the years, so I'm not surprised that they um, that they've produced something like this. I think this is very nicely executed. But um, yeah, where to start with the aroma then? So the backbone of this beer is uh, is awesome. You can smell um, you can smell that sort of um, that kind of nice oaky woody backbone in there you just smell the the kind of fruity sherry i always felt that my gran always used to enjoy a sherry and i always felt that sherry was like a sort of mix of a kind of pinky grapey a pink green and white grapey sort of thing so you can smell the, the woody backbone in this but then you can smell that nice sort of juicy layer of the sherry uh, kind of thing sitting on top of it. it's like a sultana kind of mix that's going in there too but um yeah i think that's going to come out a lot more in the flavor than it is in the aroma because it's it almost is like a kind of subtle backbone in here but the amount of other malts that they have in this beer you can just this beer comes across as quite thick in the bready and chocolatey elements which um which i can certainly appreciate but um yeah it's really interesting this one for um it is really interesting this one for sure but um yeah um, it gets the, the aroma. This is just beautiful. I'm just going to say straight away thumbs up to Poyala for how this one uh, comes out in the aroma. But yeah, the backbone of this beer is that lovely oaky smoothness. You can feel there's maybe a teeny little bit of a dryness to the wood in there as well. But then you've got a lot of raisiny and, uh, and sultana like sherry kind of qualities just sitting on top of that, which I really like. But then you start to get the, the more kind of malty elements, if you like. So yeah. Um, sitting on top of that, you can get a little bit of a toasty bread crusty element, but not a lot. It really comes out with a very smooth brown bready quality and there's a lot of chocolate in this one. It comes across as a sort of like dry powdery chocolate, I would say. So, um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one on the malty side of things is very, very nice. Um, yeah, <laughs> it gets a big thumbs up from me in that regard. So on the chocolatey side of things, I would say that this beer is maybe around the sort of 60-70% cocoa mark in terms of its chocolate. You know, there's a little, there's quite a little bit of the darker chocolate in there, but at the same time, there's a few kind of milkier elements coming out of it. And it smells very kind of powdery. Like if you put your nose in like a tub of that Nesquik powder, that's what it smells like. That is really what it smells like. But um, yeah, it's um, it goes together very, very nicely in that regard. But... Um, Yeah, the, how do you say, the, 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 the chocolate really evolves, I'm also getting hungry, you can maybe hear my stomach on the camera, I don't know, I need to go and get a burrito, but yeah, the, um, the, the aroma out of this one is just, um, very, very nice actually, it's, um, it's the chocolate, it just really, it just gives you a lovely kind of, smoothness and a slight bit of dryness to it and you get some of those kind of really nice dark chocolatey elements in there as well you can definitely smell the oaty qualities out of this one as well just kind of thickening the beer up which i really like so um yeah the brown bread that you get in this one so it's very much like brown bread chocolate on top of that so it's going to be the rye the chocolate rye that's giving you that then you've got the so the brown bread the big thick chocolatey malts on top of that and you can you kind of get the oats and i think mixing in 
somewhere in between as well come to think of it so yeah brown bread oats then the chocolate malt's kind of sitting on top of that and then the crystal is giving you just a little touch of brown sugar on top of that a wee bit of a kind of sweeter caramel on and potentially a little bit of biscuit so it's a very layered beer in terms of its aroma actually it takes a bit of time to kind of show you what it's all about but in honesty i think that kind of covers the malty side of the beer from the aroma perspective but um yeah on the hoppy side of things it comes across really nicely there's a little bit of that kind of noble earthiness out of this one you do get a wee touch of that so um yeah you, there's a wee touch of earthiness at the back of the nose you get some nice bright floral aromatic no, notes in there but you can smell that sort of noble element to this one as well remember that there's northern brewer in this one and northern brewer is at the end of the day a sort of a, a noble hop in well I don't know if you can technically term it noble, but it's a German hop anyway, and they always give you these nice, smooth, green, noble characteristics. There's a good little bit of grassiness in this one, some sweet, um, there's a little bit of a sort of sweet, um, kind of fruity character in behind there, but the grassiness that you get out of this just has a little touch of zest as well, and, um, you know, the Magnum's going to give you some really interesting kind of fruity characteristics too, so yeah, it's got a wee bit of a kind of American floral character too, but I think the, the German side of things really prevails in this one and gives you that nice smooth quality. But the fruity side of the beer, let's focus on that before we taste it. So for me, underneath that fruity side of the beer, you get a little tiny touch of an almost kind of spongy cakey sort of thing. But for me, there's a good little bit of a raisiny sharpness in there. You definitely get some plums, absolutely. So yeah, raisiny sharpness, bit of plum. And then you've also got some very nice kind of figgy and black currenty elements coming out of the beer also a little bit of a blackberry uh, quality as well so um yeah the fruity side of this aroma i think is um is very very interesting so yeah it goes together really nicely lovely raisiny notes it's got quite a bit of sharpness to it so the raisiny notes and the, the blackberry notes are quite prominent in this but underneath a bit of plum a bit of fig and maybe a bit of black currant too beautiful smell and beer i have to say and then even on top of that fruitiness you've got the kind of um almost sultana notes from the the sherry barrel aging as well so definitely take a bit of time and just ponder over the aroma of this beer this one is very interesting but i think it's time for us to try this one now so this one is the Pima U PX 13.9% Pedro Jimenez Sherry Barrel Aged Imperial Stout. I think this is going to be a little bit of a monster. Let's get stuck in. Slanja Skull, cheers. That's a beautiful beer. Um, <laughs> You know, um, Poyala have always been good. And we've had some awesome stuff from them recently. The Glen Noble Scotch Ale was bang on. Um, I've had some, you know, the original Pima U, um, the original U, I think it was, sorry. Um, that was just a beautiful beer. I think there's been several versions of the U barrel aged, and I think that's when they call it Pima U, Dark Night rather than just Night. But, um, yeah, the... The flavour of this beer is just it's just crazy. Um, this is definitely one, if you see this beer, it might be a little bit expensive at 13.9% ABV, but honestly, I think it is absolutely worth trying. So yeah, have a go at this one and just see how you get on. This is lovely. But yeah, um, that could well be one of the best beers I've had from Poyala. I would go that far. I really, really like this one. Yeah. So, um, where to start with this beer then? It is, from the aroma, it is kind of what you'd expect. It just, it translates very, very well into the aroma and I mean into the flavour, sorry. And then the thing that I'm noticing about it as well is it does develop a little bit more of a kind of roasty, toasty side of things. And the barrel does come out of it a little bit more as well in comparison to the aroma. So um, yeah, let's break the flavour of this down then. So straight away, across the middle of your palate, you've got a very nice kind of smooth woody element to the beer, which I can certainly appreciate. So yeah, you've got a lovely kind of smooth, um, you've got a lovely sort of smooth, um, 
smokiness there that forms the backbone of the beer. I think the further you go into the aftertaste, the wood dries out a little bit and just gives you a wee touch of spice actually, which is um, which is really quite interesting. But I can definitely pick up a little bit of the kind of special bee malt in this as well. You will notice that towards the back of that middle third of your tongue, some of the kind of really roasty, toasty elements of the special bee, that starts to force its way out, um, or push its way out, I should say, the further you go into the aftertaste for this one. But yeah, you've got a lovely oaky backbone to the beer, and on top of that, you can feel the nice kind of sweet sherry notes coming out of it too. So I really appreciate how that, um, how that goes about its, um, how that goes about its business. The grapey elements from the sherry are coming out just very, very nicely. Um, yeah, this is just a beautiful beer. As I say, potentially my favourite dark beer that I've had from uh, from Puyala so far. But it's um, it is quite similar to what you'd expect from the aroma. That's for sure. So yeah, um, on top of the um, yeah, on top of the woody elements there, you get a nice kind of. You certainly get a very nice. Um, just juicy sultana grapey element coming out of the beer and i love that but then on top of that you start to get the more kind of bready elements you can feel the nice kind of brown rye bread sitting on top of that and you can feel the oats just kind of thickening it up a little bit but as i say towards the back of that middle third of your tongue that's where you get the kind of roasty toasty elements of the beer pushing their way out a little bit more but we'll come back to that later but yeah um rye bread sitting on top fruity element you can feel the oats kind of smoothing it out then you've also got some um you can get all the different kind of the, the all the different kind of um crystal malts just sitting on top of that so you can feel on top of that um of everything there you've got that lovely kind of chocolatey element coming out of the beer you can feel that sort of 60 70 percent um you can feel that sort of 60 70 percent cocoa chocolate just um Kind of coming out of the beer that sits there on top of the um <clears throat> that sits there on top of it um which is very very nice um so yeah you've got an element of darker chocolate to this and it really comes across as a little bit powdery as i said earlier it's a little bit like that kind of nesquik powder you use to make chocolate milk and hot chocolate and things it really has a little bit of that kind of vibe to it a bit of a powdery slightly charred kind of thing but overall i would say that it's maybe it's actually a little bit stronger i would say that it's maybe about an 80 percent cocoa chocolate and um, that you get sitting on top of all of these um these kind of bready notes and things but when you go to the very center of your palate you definitely get a little bit of a kind of sweet caramelly note there there's a little circle on top of that chocolatey layer with a sweet caramelly note to it and as you move further out from that it becomes a little bit more kind of toasty rather than oily and there's a bit of a biscuity element uh, coming out of it as well which i um which i really like so yeah so i think it's a very layered beer this one and i think you know on top of the barrel aging it's got just the night nice, just the right little bit of a kind of roasty toasty character to let you know yeah this is an imperial stout but it's got some really lovely kind of sweet elements kind of sitting on top of it as well the grapes the bready at the bready notes just add a bit of thickness to the beer and then um, you get the chocolate and the kind of brown sugar sitting on there as well. But yeah, that covers the middle third of the palate quite um, quite nicely, I would say. But yeah, on the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you can feel there is a little bit of a kind of doughy, bready build up again, a nice little bit of a kind of well fired bread crusty element to it, which I can really appreciate. Then on the back third of your palate, there's a nice roasty, toasty um, kind of, there is a nice roasty, toasty black malty grain to this one, which I am. Um, can really appreciate too. So yeah, I really like how that side of this beer, uh, how that side of the beer goes about its business. On top of that roasty toasty black malt on the, or I guess it's the special bee, that roasty toasty black malt on the back of the, the, the tongue, you can feel a little bit of the, the yeasty, that sort of more airy yeasty flavour coming out. So you can feel the flavour on the back third of your tongue is a little bit taller. And as you move further forward, it gradually condenses down it gradually condenses down and then in the middle third of your palate it it really condenses down and it feels quite dense and thick um going forward so i can really appreciate that about um about this beer so um yeah i really like how that goes together as well for sure so um yeah it's interesting just to see how this one this one goes about its business but the complexity of this beer is definitely in the middle of the palate um in the middle third of your palate and there's some really 
interesting stuff going on there. On the hoppy side of things though, back corners of the palette, there's a nice little bit of earthiness to this one. And as you move further forward, it develops a little bit of a herbal quality. And then as you go further forward from that, it's got a really nice kind of floral aromatic side of things, which I can, uh, which I can really appreciate. So yeah. Yeah, that big, um, the, the floral note really comes out very nicely as you move further forward. It does have an element of American floral quality to it, like a real brightness, but then the German one, you get that nice noble quality mixing in there as well. The Northern Brewer and the Magnum are quite an interesting pairing, of course. But then round the front curve of the palette, the beer just feels a little bit lighter and more grassy in a sense. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, it's interesting for sure on the green side of things, but say the, the earthiness does get a little bit more prominent the further you go into it. There's some nice floral aromaticity, then round the front curve of the palette it's a little bit lighter and uh, and grassy. So um, yeah, it's really interesting how this beer goes about its business on the green side of things. But let's focus on the front third of your palette and the fruitiness now. So on that border region between front third and middle third of your palette, you can feel there's a little bit of a kind of, you can feel there's a little bit of a sort of cakey element coming out of it. Um, so you can feel a little bit of a roasty toasty cakey element there and there's a well fired kind of there is a bit of a well fired grainy element in there too but the base of that front third of your palette is more like a kind of smooth uh, spongy element too which is um, which is great so um, yeah the, the backbone of that front uh, the, the backbone of the front part of the beer does have a wee bit of bitterness to it as well, which is quite interesting. But yeah, sitting on top of that, as I always say, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. So when you take this one in, there's definitely a good bit of a raisiny character to it. Underneath that, pardon me, on the back third of your palate, you get some juicy plums and it gradually becomes a little bit more sort of figgy as you move further forward. And as you reach the front, half of that front third of your tongue, it's definitely more of a kind of blackberry note. And then you get a lovely, um, you get a lovely sort of black um, berry kind of sharpness just sitting on top of that. So it's um, it's a lovely beer actually. So I think that's um, I think that's how um, I think that's how it goes in terms of the fruity side of things. But the the juiciness, that good blend of juiciness and sharpness in there from the fruit from the from the hoppy elements of the fruit, and then the the fruity side from the barrel aging as well. I think goes together really nicely. But um, yeah, I think it works. This this beer really does work very, very well. Um Yeah, this um it's just it's really nicely executed this beer. It's got a lovely blend of fruitiness. It's got enough roasty and toastiness to let you know this is an Imperial stout and then the barrel aging elements in this are just really Nicely executed as well. So big, big thumbs up to. Uh, <coughs> geez, I'm going to sneeze about ten times now. Just watch it. So, um, yeah, the the barrel aging side of this beer is done really well. So a big thumbs up to um, to Puyala for this one. But yeah, let's go through the mouthfeel then. This one round off the review. So overall, I would say that this beer is kind of bottom end of full bodied. Carbonation is very very smooth in this, as you would expect. You often get this with barrel aged beers. Um, and I'd say that overall, it's got a little bit of slickness to it, but it's a very, very smooth beer, this one, I would say. And it just, it works out very, very nicely. So again, a big thumbs up to Poyala for this beer. In terms of bitterness, I think this beer does have a little bit of bitterness to it, maybe like 70 or so, 60, 70 IBUs, um, something like that. Um, so yeah, it does have a fair wee bit of bitterness to it, a bit more than some of the other um imperial stouts we've had from Puyala before but that's just from memory I could be quite wrong on that that might be standard for them but yeah quite a bit of the bitterness comes from the malty side of things there is a little bit from the hoppy side of the beer too but the malty and barrel side of this beer is very layered and it does develop more sweetness the further you go into the aftertaste but it's kind of balanced out with a bit of roasted toastiness to let you know yes this is an imperial stout the fruity side of this beer though is the highlight for me you've got some lovely juicy fruity notes out of this one it's just a very very well balanced beer it's got a really great level of complexity to it and i think this could potentially be the best one that i've had the best stout i would say that i've had from puyala thus far so um yeah it's been awesome to review this one here on the channel for you i hope that you guys enjoyed my take on it very nice to return to puyala of course so i will need to figure out about getting some more beers from these guys once i've finished off my uh, my estonian reviews
I'm working through at the moment. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Pima U PX, the Dark Knight Pedro Jimenez Barrel Aged Edition, 13.9% Imperial Stout aged in sherry barrels and it just worked out absolutely beautifully thank you again for watching my reviews let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from poyala as well we will no doubt return to these guys at some point soon check out my social media check out this brewery and i will see you guys in the next review slanja skull cheers and tervisex